For a month, scenes of political turmoil have swept across Venezuela, a country with the world's largest oil deposits. As citizens protest against a rise in violent crime, inflation has hit an all-time high along with a shortage of basic food items. Peaceful protests quickly turned deadly when three people were shot by gunmen on the 12th of February. Since then, there have been daily demonstrations. Protesters have also been complaining against the detention of opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez, who was jailed on inciting violence and conspiracy after he asked the opposition to join the students and keep the Pacific protest on the streets. He surrendered to authorities after making a speech to thousands of supporters. People against the government started to close up the streets with barricades. The protests have been joined by tens of thousands of Venezuelans, mostly in the middle class areas. Many poor Venezuelans support peaceful demonstrations against soaring inflation and chronic product shortages too. But on the whole, they say they are more worried about losing the little pension subsidies gained under Chavez if the opposition were to come to power. This is a working class neighborhood and shouldn't get natural support base for the socialist government. But the people here say that they're fed up and they're turning against President Maduro and joining the opposition. When students have organized protests in their areas, local colectivos have abused their power and had broken them up. The government accuses protesters of throwing stones and causing riots. The response by President Maduro was to crack down on protesters using the military to reportedly beat and detain anyone protesting or closing the streets. said there's an attempted coup in progress in Venezuela. An attempt orchestrated and directed by political and financial elites in the United States. At the time, President Maduro invited all parties to take part in a dialogue for peace, but students and opposition leaders refused to go. They have said that they won't sit down to talk unless the government releases Leopoldo Lopez, the other political prisoners, and disarms the colectivos, paramilitary gangs. 
it's important to note that uh, Genesis Carmona, the beauty queen who was killed in Valencia, uh, was killed by one of these violent groups of motorcycles who came to disperse a peaceful protest. And the reason they did that is because the government of the state of Carabobo tweeted, a tweet that has since been deleted, um, that Puerto people should go out in full force to combat the fascist uh, gringo students who, or he didn't say students, but uh, gringos who were in the streets. Um, so, so there's just one uh, evidence of how the government promotes this violence. There have been insinuations that these armed civilians have been trained in Cuba to protect the government. A former Cuban intelligence official, Roberto Mario, describes how the Castro regime trained them. Están entrenados para matar, están entrenados para defender, están entrenados para ser escolta. Yo recuerdo que los primeros muchachos que mandamos para que fueran escoltas de Freddy Bernal, de Juan Barreto, de Ronald Blanco La Cruz, de Florencio Porres, hablando de gobernadores de Estado y alcaldes, se formaron también en Pinar del Río, en la Escuela Superior de la Policía en Pinar del Río, en Guanito, que es donde se fusila. Actualmente Cuba fusila en Guanito, un centro de operaciones militares que existe camino a, a, a Sumidero, un poblado al norte de la provincia de Pinar del Río. Mario defected during his service in Venezuela. Bands of regime supporters, known as colectivos, have been seen in neighborhoods and public squares on their motorcycles, firing live ammunition to scare protesters who remained in the open. People from the residential areas have said that the national police hasn't done anything to stop them. In the following video, they take one of the protesters to their motorbikes. Opposition headquarters and residential buildings were also raided by security forces in Venezuela. It has also issued an arrest warrant for retired General Angel Vivas. The general posted this tweet, urging citizens to string nylon cables across streets. That advice, he told CNN, was aimed at stopping gun-toting government loyalists on motorbikes. In an interview, General Vivas exposes the Cuban involvement in Venezuelan government and security operations. If he does an investigation at fondo, he will find the presence of Cuban in all the structures of the state of Venezuela. He goes to the ministries, he goes to any dependency, for example, of the foreign countries, because they control the emission of our cell phone, which is a company of Cuban. I don't remember the name right now, but it's the Division of Informatics of the University of La Habana, which is controlled by Ramiro Valdez, who is an assassin, a despiadant Cuban, which I would classify as a genocide. The National Guard have even shot tear gas to the buildings to repress people. Disparándole a los edificios, los hijos de puta es eso. Disparándole a los edificios. Esos son zonas residenciales. Esos son puras casas, apartamentos. Aquí vive una niña de nueve meses. Le están disparando bombas lacrimógenas que da gusto. A leader of the opposition has denounced the human rights violations. Traje cuatro casos aquí, pedí esta mañana. Casos de tortura. 
Juan Manuel Carrasco, desde aquí te saludamos. Víctima de violación, Estado Carabobo. ¿Por qué tiene esto que pasar? Jorge León, fisura de cráneo. Le partieron un casco en la cabeza. Están en el expediente judicial. Marco Coello, detenido por el 6 CPC de Caracas. Fisura de costillas, producto de golpes recibidos durante su detención. Costa en su expediente judicial. Luis Boada, René Boldán, Néstor Gil, golpeados y rociados con gasolina. Detenidos por el CICPC en Caracas. Son 18 torturados que denunciaron violación de sus derechos humanos. Consta en cada uno de sus expedientes. Estas violaciones a sus derechos humanos fueron realizados durante la detención. Aquí no están señalados los excesos al momento de detener a las personas y la represión durante la dispersión de las manifestaciones. Esto incluye medios internacionales a más de 500 denuncias por excesos y represión brutal. Por ejemplo, el estudiante Carlos Tejada, que perdió un ojo producto de una bomba lacrimógena que le dispararon. A la cara. More than 2,026 demonstrators have been arrested and a majority of them have been accused of crimes that could lead to prison sentences of up to 15 years. According to the Association of Human Rights Lawyers, the Venezuelan Penal Forum, 1,114 have a conditional freedom and 85 remain in jail. Mira cómo le dan golpe, miren, miren, no es mentira, nos están matando en Venezuela. Fuera Nicolás, maldito, nos están matando por tu culpa. Mira cómo le dan coñazo, no es mentira. Authorities have reported that the unrest has killed 37 people so far as a result of the ongoing protests and more than 559 have been injured since the protests started. In the meantime, all of these facts have been silenced from the national media because of heavy censorship. So what we've seen over the last year, and I've seen it personally working in Venezuelan media, we've seen a ton of uh, different groups and uh, organizations either get bought out, get closed down, or get threatened. Uh, and the threatening has become very common. There's a watch what you publish mentality that has basically cowed the entire Venezuelan media establishment. And that creates a situation where if you're not going, I mean, it's either the Panglossian version that they'll give you, or it's Twitter, which tends to be very unreliable on both sides. Social media networks have become an important source of information for Venezuelans. 
It has been said that Twitter has been blocked at times and even curtailed media coverage of the unrest. New Rexler, a Twitter spokesman, confirmed in an email that the government was behind the disruption. Sources have also revealed that the Inter-American Press Association has confirmed the government for preventing private newspapers from purchasing newsprint paper. Mr. Maduro has removed Colombian TV news channel NTN24 from the air. And has criticized the Agence France Press News Agency. He has also threatened CNN out of the country over their consistent coverage of the unrest. He announced in a television broadcast that they were promoting war propaganda. I asked the communications minister to notify CNN to start the administrative process of removing them from Venezuela if they didn't rectify their story. CNN, get out of Venezuela and stop your propaganda war. CNN has been in some trouble over the past few weeks here. A lot of the foreign press and also members of the Venezuelan press. And there have been dozens, maybe 70 members of the press, who have uh, been arrested, been targeted during these demonstrations. Would you say now that the press is welcome to do their work here? Always. It's been always the case and it will be the case. At the same time, a state-run VTV showed pro-government demonstrators waving flags using library footage, making any media in Venezuela unreliable. State-run media portrays student protesters as violent troublemakers. While covering the unrest, 76 media workers have been reported as victims of abuse and or harassment, according to the National Press Workers' Union. Twenty-one journalists have been detained and 17 cameras as well as other equipment which was taken away from the Venezuelan government as reported on the situation from the 12th until the 28th of February. Venezuelans keep the protest with daily rallies and some others with barricades closing the streets in many cities across the country. They are backing the national protest with their constitutional right to protest. Protesters complain the socialist government has mismanaged the country during the last 16 years, creating all kinds of problems. How do you call a regime that persecutes, that has repression, that tortures students and the censorship the press? How is that regime called? It's a dictatorship.